You can sit up here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Phil Wasserman. You are very lucky because this will be the best 45 minutes you'll hear anywhere. Okay. I, of course, am extremely humble. I had an argument with my wife recently about how humble I am. Donald Trump's brother. And I'm the only person in this room who Donald Trump has ever yelled at personally. And if we get time, I'll tell you the story. This is my son, Michael, who works for us. Michael is a graduate of University of Miami. He is a chartered retirement planning counselor from the College of Financial Planning. He has been around the subjects I'm going to tell you about since he was in high school. He has a lot of experience and he's an expert regardless of his young age. I'll tell you a little bit more about me, but I want to cover uh, some things we're doing. First of all, I think the show is over at 5 o'clock today, is that right? 5.30? Well, here's the good news. At 5 o'clock, at the Wave. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Wave is, it's the bar next to the front desk in the hotel. They have a couple of private alcoves on the right. When you go in, you can ask the hostess. We have something very special for you. Free hors d'oeuvres, and by the way, they are outstanding, and free drinks. And that would include everything from an Arnold Palmer to whatever alcoholic beverage you would like. You are welcome to come, stop by. It's just social. We had a great time last night when we did it. We had a lot of people there. They ate a lot of food. Everybody loved the food. So if you're free, anytime from 5 to 7, the wave, and that's in the bar next to the hotel lobby. It's, and by the way, they have outstanding food. Tomorrow morning, we have a invite-only breakfast. I don't remember where it is. Michael, I think, remembers. It's at 7 a.m., in case that isn't early enough for you. And I do know that we only got the best food the hotel has, including Mickey Mouse waffles. What is a Mickey Mouse waffle? It's a regular waffle cut with ears that they charge us five times as much money because it looks like Mickey Mouse. Uh, so if you're interested in that, see Michael, see Michelle in the back before we go. Yeah, you do have to sign up in the breakfast or come by our booth, which is uh, 601. So I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to try not to go over, which I did yesterday, about the anti-annuity, but first I want to start with a little bit about annuities. I sell more annuities than anybody in the United States and have for about 12 or 13 years. I have all the proof of that. I wrote the book that 8,000 planners use called Outlasting the Storm. It's out of print, but we can send you a copy on PDF that's email, and we're happy to do that. I trained most of the experts in this field. There are 100,000 people licensed to sell annuities in the state of Florida. 100. 99,000 of them are not qualified to be a janitor in this incredible hotel and convention center. That doesn't mean they're not nice people. It just means that they have not been trained very well. They don't take this with a passion and they don't study very well. And as a result, that has left my industry with a very bad taste in the mouth of the public, justifiably so. I have said many times that we rank slightly below used car salespeople, but I think that is an insult to used car salespeople. I have the largest practice of this type in the country. I've done more of it than anybody, and I've been doing it for a very long time because I'm 59 and I've been doing it since I was 23, so you guys do the math. Anyway, annuities are great for one thing, income, that's it. And if you have one and you're using it for income, that's the purpose. How do you know if you have the best one? It's pretty easy. I can do a computer check for you, thank God to Bill Gates and Steve uh, Jobs, and you can compare your annuity with all the other annuities to make sure that you're getting the highest income. Most people don't do that. 
And the income differences we see, it's not unusual to see variances of 20 to 25 percent in income. That's a lot of money. And the reason is, is because your people did not check everything when they sold it to you. Now, for annuities, I think income are the, is the single best, excuse me, for income, I think annuities are the single best product. But only 20% of annuities are ever used. And the question I get is, why? I don't know. That means eight out of 10 of you in this room who have annuities will never use them. You're gonna die with them unused, and I'm gonna go into the problems with that. Why were you sold them? I don't know why. The only question I ask somebody if they wanna buy an annuity is do they need income, when, and are they sure? Because if they don't, they don't buy one from me. But let me start with hypocrisy. Okay, we all know the meaning of that word, right? So I'm going to start with Howard Stern. How many of you in this room like Howard Stern? Okay, we have three, four. That's four more than yesterday. Okay, and I want you to remember the guy makes $80 million a year because of all the people who listen to him, but nobody ever admits it. Now, Howard Stern was talking a few years ago on the radio about how Coca-Cola would not advertise with him. Because Coca-Cola, all American, who has a big stock position in Coca-Cola, Warren Buffett, did not think that Howard Stern presented the right image for their product. Now, how many of you, be honest, can see where Coca-Cola is coming from? Raise your hands. Most of us, right? Here's what Howard Stern had to say, and he's 150% right. Now, before I tell you this, I need a disclaimer. I love Coca-Cola. I love Pepsi-Cola, and I love Mountain Dew. Not allowed to drink it anymore in any version, and I don't from, for about six months. But when I see that Pepsi commercial of the people, you seen that one recently? They're dancing and Pepsi on your tongue and they're having a good time. I am jonesing for a Pepsi. I promise you. So I love it. But now I want to tell you what Howard said. Pepsi Cola, no, excuse me, said about Coca Cola. Coca Cola sells sugar water. That's what it is, folks. It's sugar water, which explains why I love it so much. They are making our youth obese. They sell sugar water, which any doctor, any dentist will tell you is horrific for you, and they are selling it portrayed as all-American. And when you, first of all, is he right? He is right. So the company that in essence is selling us a non-nutritional drink, labeling it as the all-American drink, is telling the guy with the potty mouth that they don't like the way he represents the all-American drink, which is almost the worst thing you can drink. I call that, I agree with him, hypocrisy. So I have to touch here on some hypocrisy in our business. And I want to pick out Ken Fisher. Okay? Most of you know who Ken Fisher is? Forbes columnist. Forbes columnist and a money manager, billionaire. So we're going to start with he's smarter than I am because he's a billionaire. Ken Fisher hates annuities. Have any of you seen that? You've seen his ads? You've seen this? Ken, I'm watching the Republican convention, or not that, the debate, about four debates ago when they were all there. And in the middle of it comes a Ken Fisher commercial. I'm Ken Fisher. I hate annuities. Well, here's the reason Ken Fisher hates annuities. Because he makes a lot more money charging you a fee to manage your money, regardless of whether the market goes up or down. In 2008, I don't think he refunded anybody any of their fees. They lost money. In January, when the market was down, I don't think he refunded any of their money. Market was down. So he really hates annuities because it affects his business model. Now, I understand that, 
but I don't make that a hip, I call him a hypocrite for that. By the way, I've called him out nationally. Called him out nationally. I have challenged him to an internet debate on this because I don't think it's important enough for Fox News to cover it. Even though I wouldn't mind Megyn Kelly and Bill O'Reilly asking me some questions. <laughs> so why do I call Ken Fisher a hypocrite? Well, many of you know if you go on Edgar or Yahoo Finance, you can see who owns all the major stock positions in public companies. Am I right? You know that. A lot of companies that sell annuities are public. Their shareholders are listed. One of the biggest selling annuity companies is a company called American Equity. I don't represent American Equity, so I'm unbiased here, but they're a very good company. The chairman's a pretty smart guy. They're based in Iowa, but in the winter he lives in Longboat Key, so he's smart enough to come down and get out of the cold. Ken Fisher is the sixth largest shareholder of American Equity. <laughs> they're the second biggest seller of equity indexed annuities. The guy who is doing commercials, newspaper ads doing this, telling you he hates annuities and you should too, has put tens of millions of dollars of his client's money into an annuity company. I don't know about you, but I call that hypocrisy. Would you all agree? Yes. Definitely is. So uh, I'm looking forward to the chance to debate Ken on that. I don't think I'm ever going to get it, but uh, we're, we hope so. Now. This is a great show. There's a lot of great exhibitors here, but I do something different. We focus on income plans, legacy plans, long-term care and home health plans, and tax plans. We have a CPN staff. I have a law degree. I've had TV shows, radio shows, newspaper columns. I've been an expert witness for companies, for plaintiffs. I've helped design products, and I've done more of this than anybody in the country. And as I told you, in our business, there are a lot of people who don't know what they're doing. You probably already know that. Now, you've had a, a show where you have some great people in there, and many of you, this is not the only uh, talk you're going to hear. Am I right? So I like you to remember me, because according to my wife, I have a substantial ego. OK? Once again. Michael was witness to that uh, conversation. I disagreed with her, and, but she won. Now, my name is Phil. I want you to remember that. Phil, say it, Phil. OK, you guys remember that. But that's not enough to remember me. So in our business, there are a lot of nuts. But we're the sweet people. So I'm going to give you a way to remember me. While I take a quick 60 second stand up here, think about myself, Michael and Michelle are going to pass you out candy and nuts. <laughs> and the nuts are if we run out of candy. Where is all that? It's up front. It's up front. So Michelle, would you and Michael please go pass everybody out? We have M&Ms, we have Reese's, and we have nuts, planter's nuts. I don't know if we have enough, OK? If we don't have enough, I'm very sorry. You can remember me, the group of you who get it, as I'm the one who gave you the candy and nuts. Those of you who we shorted, you can remember me with disgust as you didn't get the candy or the nuts. I want to add that along with the Cheesecake Factory, I am doing my job to help spread diabetes type 2 <laughs> in Orlando. On a side note, having nothing to do with what we're here speaking about, you should see the look on people's faces 
when you go into Walmart and buy $300 worth of Reese's and M&M's, and it's not Halloween. Yes? Okay, there's an interesting question. Am I related to Debbie Wasserman Schultz? So here's, first of all, the answer is no. Number two, I get emails very often. Are you related to Debbie Wasserman Schultz? If you are, you're a blankety, blankety, blank. If you're not, I'm sorry I bothered you. She's a con. <laughs> Uh, she's a politician Democrat who can be slightly unpopular. What about Bruce? What about what? You're related to Bruce? No. Michael. I'm related to Michael. <laughs> However, if you like me enough that my family tree is important to you, I am happy to email you or send you a list of all the relatives I know about and we can see if we know any of them. I'll give you while they're passing this out, here's a fairly good story. I'm in the villages and I'm from Chicago originally. I meet with the guys from Chicago. I tell them my younger brother is working in Chicago, is a graduate of University of Miami, and I tell him he worked at LaSalle Bank and UBS. It takes the guy two hours, I don't tell him it's, it takes the guy two hours to figure out that my younger brother worked for him for nine years. I didn't know it. So sometimes we don't know. Okay, are we getting everything passed out? We're out? Michael still has stuff, right? Michael's giving everybody a choice over there. How far back did you get here? Okay, why don't you help Michael then? Okay, very good. We are the only speaker who wastes time passing out treats. Okay, let's talk about, so we covered annuities. If you have an annuity, and you want a second opinion, come by the booth at 601. You're gonna get, when you get this information, my business card inside here. You can email me, you can text me, you may call. You may do this seven days a week. Now this is very important. I have clients all over the country. If you are in Florida, I probably do seminars near you, and you can call us and sign up for seminars. If you are out of state, I probably have reps near you, or I can meet with you while we're here. You can come to the WAVE tonight or come by the booth 601. We're happy to meet with you if you're out of state. But I will tell you while the candy and nuts are getting passed out that many times I will get texts late night and weekends or emails. And I like Blue Bloods. I'm a Tom Selleck fan. So every Friday night at 10 o'clock, I'm watching Blue Bloods with my wife. Many times, I will get a text or email for somebody with a question. My wife is always asking me, she never gets it, who is bothering you, texting you, calling you at 10 o'clock on Friday night? I, of course, always give her the same answer, my inspiration. What do I say? Jake from State Farm. It's exactly right. Then, of course, since my wife knows I'm not texting Jake from State Farm, she says, let me see your phone, and then she's okay. But I will say that every, it doesn't matter, every time. It's always the same answer, and I always get the same look. And by the way, if you're getting the idea after this point that my wife is close to sainthood, you are pretty accurate. Now, let's talk about the anti-annuity. If you want, we're going to give you when you leave. Now Michael's throwing them around. That's just, are you getting that, Stephen, on video? That, that's just amazing. OK, I love it. Are we out? Did we short a lot of people? We apologize. OK, remember, those of you who got it can now remember. Those of you who didn't will definitely now remember. We apologize. Come to the wave. Free food and booze will make it up to you, but better value than the candy. Stephen, how many of these have you videotaped today? Is this the most entertaining one so far? Absolutely. See, I didn't lie to you at the beginning. Okay. So I have 25 minutes. I'm going to ask you a question. 
I'm just going to get right to the meat of this. Would you rather me take four minutes out and tell you about Donald Trump yelling at me? Yes. Okay, here you go. I'm a member of Mar Largo. That's the club in Palm Beach. I do seminars there. I have for years. It's a purpose because if you're in Palm Beach and I invite you to have dinner with me at Mar Largo, you're always going. Everybody's always going. So we did seminars there. And on a Sunday morning a few years ago, they had buffets. I had a group of people there, and usually when I'm done on Sunday morning, I leave. But this was a real nice day, and I made the decision to stay and have a cup of coffee. Big mistake. So Trump knows me well. We've been doing events there for years. We spend a lot of money there. It's the main reason. Well, that day we had three things happen. Some of our seminar people stayed around, and they were not as well behaved as here at the Money Show. So one gentleman went up to Trump and started asking him to make a donation to his charity. Another group of people, there were two people, went into the buffet and did not use tongs in front of Trump, who's a known germaphobe, and used their hands to take food out of the buffet. How well do you think that went over? But the worst thing that happened is Trump lives there. He has a small apartment. He also has, some of you have heard about how he hires out-of-country workers. He does, and let me tell you what. Every woman who works there is stunning. <laughs> stunning. Okay? So he doesn't add that in on the debates. He had a security guard who's a retired Navy SEAL. The security guard thought it was more important to be talking to the beautiful woman from Romania at the front desk than guarding Donald. Donald decided to go back into his apartment. Unbeknownst to me, six of my seminar goers followed him inside. Now, you know where the part where he says that he has a great temperament? Not that day. Not that day. I'm sitting there, I have no idea any of this going on, and the only thing I'm guilty of is being too stupid to have left earlier, and he comes up to me in front of like everybody, and he starts screaming about, and I'm just in total shock, the people who are in the club and they're ruining the club and they're horrific and he doesn't want them there anymore, and I'm just in shock because I have no clue what's going on. So when he got done, he left. He was fine a week later. Fine a week later, and by the way, he's a really nice man in person, except for that moment. So when I was through, I called my wife and I said, you're not going to believe what happened. And I told her, and here's what she said. She goes, did he fire you? <laughs> so uh, we just took three minutes out from that story. That is a true story. Uh, but uh, we know better now. Now we have to instruct everybody to behave themselves. OK, here we go, the anti-annuity. The anti-annuity is a high-bred insurance product. And what that means is, and, and let me tell you folks something. Most of you won't have heard of this. It, we trademarked anti-annuity. I'll explain what the product is, the term, but not the product we trademarked. A lot of people have products that they never tell you about. Merrill Lynch at one time had 2,000 proprietary products. It was impossible for a rep to know all of them. This product is mostly sold by banks. It's issued by insurance companies. It's mostly sold by banks. And I'll explain to you why when we're through. That means big national banks sell it. They sell it in lieu of CDs or money markets. Now, what's the product? It's a hybrid insurance product where they took an annuity. It's very simple. And this is the best part about it. It's very simple. It's easy to understand. At the end, you're going to say, wow, it's too good to be true, and then I'm going to prove to you it exists, because it's a highly regulated product. It is an annuity that can go up and not go down. So whatever it makes is locked in. But annuities have caps and spreads, and they're complex. This has unlimited growth. So in 2000, and 13, when the market was up 29%, this made 23%, and it locked in. Locked in. So this is a serious product. The next year, it made about 17%. In 
And last year with the market flat, it didn't lose, but it didn't make anything. And if the market is down, it won't lose, but it won't make anything. We got that? That's how an indexed annuity works, only this is uncapped. But here's the problem with the 80% of annuities that are not used. Unlike stocks, so let me ask you. So one of you, somebody in here bought Apple stock 10 years ago, put half a million in, it's worth probably a lot more than this, we'll say it's worth a million. You die, your kids get the million dollars in Apple stock, they sell it the next day, off to the BMW dealership they go. We know none of your children would really do that with your money, so we'll use my example. Maybe they'd go to the Porsche dealership, I don't know. And anyway, do they owe any tax on that half a million dollars of profit you made in Apple? Of course not because of the step-up basis. Same thing with bonds, real estate, mutual funds, etc. Annuities, unless they're in a Roth, or unless they're in an IRA where they can be stretched, when you die with an unused annuity, not allowed to stretch them. There's dozens of IRS rulings on this. Not allowed to. All the profit is immediately subject to federal and state income tax. Most people aren't aware of this. So the 80% of people who have annuities that are in ordinary non-qualified funds, they're sitting on tax time bonds. Do we get that? And if you have one now, whatever it makes during your lifetime, if you don't use it, depending on where your heirs live, 40 to 50% of that money goes to the government. Now, so the companies realize this. They took the annuity and they put it in a life insurance wrapper. Let me start with people don't like life insurance. It's not a happy subject, but they did this as wealth transfer. They did it without any premiums. They did it without any medical exams. There's 15 health questions. They start writing it at age 45. They will sell it to you up to age 85. Household name companies sell this. They can never drop it. It's good for as long as you live. The reason they put it in a life insurance wrapper, so it's an annuity in a life insurance wrapper, is because it would then go tax-free to the people you care about. So I want you to think about the uses before I give you the two other biggest selling components. The uses are, if you have an annuity you're not using, this will go tax-free, you replace it. And many times, you can do it with the same company. And if you have surrender penalties, it works out. If, even if you have taxable profit, we'll show you how to do it. That's why we have a CPA on staff. It can all be done. If you're thinking of buying an annuity and you don't need income, that's where people buy this product. So the number one use of this product is for the 80% of people who have annuities who aren't using them. Now, the second use is maybe you have a pension that's not vested in your spouse. When you die, there's an income loss. There's also a loss of the lower social security. You can use this for legacy planning for your spouse. And I'll get to some more legacy planning here. So this product has two other features, has unlimited growth, tax-free benefits to the spouse, heirs, etc. But then people say, what does it do for me? Well, we're gonna pass out, in addition to the booklet, an article from Barron's about long-term care. Now, I think Barron's is one of the most respected publications in the world. The problem with long-term care insurance, which I don't sell, is it's hard to get and it's expensive. And if you have it, the premiums go up. And the reason for that is that 65% of all people over the age of 65 end up using it. They use long-term care, they use home health care. So as a result, the premiums go through the roof because of the claims ratio. And many people can't get it, hard to get. Now this product I just told you about, 98.5% of all people get it. You've had cancer, you get it, get, you're okay. Had a heart attack, you're okay. Had a stint, you're okay. Almost never is anybody denied. Happens about one and a half percent of the time. 
This product includes long-term care and home health care at no charge. It includes it. It's called a living benefit. That means whatever the death benefit is, is available for long-term care and home health care. At no charge, no premiums ever. And Barron's, in their article on long-term care, in the last page, which we highlighted for you, it's only three pages, mentions specifically how many retirees and pre-retirees are going to this product as an alternative. So the good thing about this is, you don't have to just believe me, you just met, you can believe Barron's. And this is a great article, and I suggest you read it. Now, there's another selling point. We have three points so far. Unlimited growth, tax-free additional death benefit, long-term care, and home health care. And we're going to give you this booklet, which is in real big print and easy to read. So even though it looks like 30 pages, it's really about five pages. Major selling point. If you buy an annuity, it has a surrender penalty. That means your money's tied up. If you buy a REIT, your money's tied up. If you invest in a real estate project, your money's tied up. Number one reason people don't like annuities, surrender penalties. When you buy this product, regardless of companies, it is 100% liquid from day one. There are no surrender penalties. If you put in, and by the way, the minimum you can put in is 25,000. The maximum is usually 500,000. You can use it in IRAs and 401ks, not inside, but to get the taxable amounts out, we'll show you how to do it, and there's an example in here. That means that if you put 200,000 in, and you decide you don't want your money in there, you don't like who was elected president, you're going to move to Canada, Belize. even though Belize is much warmer. By the way, I don't know if you know this, that's trending on Yahoo, moving to Canada. So uh, I'm sure Canadians will be happy to have as many of us as, as they can handle. But uh, that's the part that people find hard to believe. If you put that money in, you don't have to wait two years, you don't have to wait two months, you don't have to wait six weeks, you don't have to wait six days, you don't have to wait six hours. That money is liquid to you with any of the companies that write it immediately. Now, many people say, what about the poor insurance company? I've heard this a lot. First of all, folks, there is no such thing as a poor insurance company. Please don't use that sentence, okay? The insurance companies have figured out actuarially how many people will keep their money in, which is most. So they know they can offer this because most people will leave it in, which is what they want. What they actually want you to do is leave it in about eight to 10 years and then take it out so they don't have to pay the death or long-term care claims, but you don't have to do that. Now. Why don't more people sell this? The banks sell it. I have 400 and something reps around the country. How many of them will sell this, 18 or 19? Roughly. Roughly. What's the reason? Because the product is really good. If you take all your money out, and you can take part of it out, if you take all your money out in the first three years, whoever sells it to you doesn't get a commission. So if I sell you an annuity, and six months from now you say, I hate annuities, which means I didn't do a very good job of suitability, and I'm going to talk to you about suitability, then I still get paid. If you buy one of these, take it out, all the money, you can take out part, in the first three years, whoever sold it to you doesn't get paid. They finally developed a product where they were worried about you and not the reps. No buyer's remorse, thank you for reminding me of that. So many times, as you know, you've bought something. There's a term called cognitive dissonance. Anybody ever heard of that term? 
It used to be where years ago, do you remember the luxury cars had all kinds of mechanical problems? Tremendous, before they had so many luxury cars. Yet people who bought them always rated them very highly. And then they did a study and they discovered that people who spent 50 grand on a car when that was a lot of money for a car couldn't justify in their mind they made a mistake. That's cognitive dissonance. You can't have that on this product. You can never have buyer's remorse. Why? Because if you wake up and you want your money back, you get all your money back whenever you want. So as a result, you can never be unhappy with the product, which is the actual case, the highest satisfaction studies in the industry because of that ability. Now, I've got a couple of things and then we're almost done. <coughs> Excuse me. We have, can I get a glass of water, Michael, please? What I want to talk to you about now is, you're seeing a lot of great products in there, you're seeing a lot of great people. Many of you have been pitched annuities. And if you own a variable annuity, I hope you come see me because you're paying three to 5% in fees and I will show you alternatives within the same company you have it with, where the fees are about a third to a quarter of what you have. I guarantee it. Remember this, if you put 100,000 in a variable annuity and your fees are three to 5%, it's three to 5,000 a year, that means after 10 years you've paid 30 to $50,000 in fees. If you meet the greatest money managers in the world here, who usually charge one to one and a half percent, that's fine. If they told you they charged 5%, you would run away from the booth. Yet that's what variable annuities do. It's a lot of different annuities, but variable, Susie Orman says, the only reason for them to exist is to make advisors rich. So here's the question. I meet a lot of people, I do seminars all over the country. If you are in Florida, uh, you wanna come to the seminars, we do them here, we do them in Sarasota, Naples, Fort Myers, Tampa Bay, Palm Beach, Vero, uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, et cetera. And we do do them around the country and have advisors who do them. When somebody shows me something, you know what I ask them? Doesn't matter whether it's a financial product or a car. Actually, I'll use a car. Would you buy a car from a salesperson who wasn't driving the same make doesn't have to be the same model, the same make that he's trying to sell you. What if a salesperson was trying to sell you a Toyota and he was driving a Honda? Doesn't say much. So let me give you a little piece of advice. When somebody wants to sell you something, say, show me yours. Show me yours. You want me to buy a variable annuity? Show me yours. You want me to buy another type of annuity? Show me yours. By the way, I can show you mine on this because I have two of them. Two of them. So it's easy for me to do. If somebody wants to, you to buy a REIT, show me where you bought one. Show me how much money you invested. Because anybody who believes in their product that much that they want you to fork over your hard-earned dollars should be willing to put their own faith in it. Don't you agree with me? Absolutely. Now, this morning I had a meeting with Kim Gaither, who owns The Money Show. Many of you have heard her name, right? Uh, I'd like to, in absenteeism, let's give her a big round of applause, because I think she does an incredible job. Now, she's from Sarasota, where I live. I had met her before. They do an amazing job here, I think. And, of course, Larry Kudlow has spoken here. Steve Rogers, or not Steve Rogers, Steve Forbes no. spoken. He didn't come? No. Family emergency. Family emergency. Well, that means I'm the second best speaker here. Okay? I was going to be third. I'm not going to say I'm better than Larry Kudlow, even though for $1.99, I don't think he gave you any candy or nuts or disappointed you. <laughs> I certainly am the least modest of all the speakers you'll see. How about that? But what Kim said to me today, we had a long talk about suitability. And she's very familiar with our company for many years. And we talked about this. And yesterday we had somebody who came to the booth and then came here, and they were interested 
in a product for their son. He'd been advised of this, and he told me the company, and I said, I'm familiar with that, and I think your son should buy it from whoever showed it to him. And he was astounded. And he said, why? I said, because it's a great product and somebody's already showed it to him. When you meet with us, whether it's me, Michael, Ken, whether it's on email, and I'm happy to correspond to you, and we've learned now late at night and weekends, uh, we talk to you, the number one thing we will always do before we will ever even talk to you about the benefits of a product are suitability. Is it suitable for you? Because if it's not, we have no interest in a relationship outside of friendship. We are not short on potential clients. We value every potential client. But somebody, something being right for you is the most important thing. And I wish everybody in the industry was that way. And that made Kim very happy. And she asked me today to mention that and said I should lead with it. Now, I only have a couple of minutes left. Michael is going to pass out and Michelle the booklets and the Forbes report. Barons. Barons, excuse me. Missed that. Remember, the wave, five to seven, free booze, free food. That's always very popular. But I want to tell you a couple more things about us so you understand. First of all, anybody in the room, do you guys want to take those up so as people leave, they can get them? And if you want us to scan your badges to be on our mailing list, fine. And if not, fine, no problem. If you want to talk more, come to the wave or come by the booth at 601 and arrange to meet with us. Do any of you in this room like dogs? Raise your hand. OK. More people than Howard Stern, less people than Coca-Cola. OK. I love dogs. So to tell you a little bit about us, we have a dog rescue a real dog rescue. If you're on Facebook, it's called Snowflake's Dog Rescue. Snowflake was my golden retriever who died a few years ago, who used to do commercials with me. And we, ha we take dogs from kill shelters, like Miami-Dade, which is horrific. They kill about 10,000 great animals a year for no reason other than space. And we house them. We home them, and we vet them. So that'll give you an idea of what kind of people you are, we are, from telling you that. Now, I'm giving, everybody in the back is waving because they already know that I can talk too much. And I didn't give the staff any candy, so they didn't let me talk any longer. I think we've covered this all. You are going to get the booklet, the Barron's Report, You've got the wave. Come drink. Come have food. It was great. If you want to come by the booth, 601. If you want to have breakfast tomorrow at 7 AM, a little early for me, but I'll be there. I want to thank you very much for coming. You have been great. And what's my name? Phil. Yeah. Yeah, God remembered that. And remember, those of you who got the candy, God bless you. Those of you we shorted, come make it up with free booze and free great hors d'oeuvres. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.